If you play live cash games, chances are you've noticed that most rooms spread either 1-2 or 1-3. Some rooms actually spread both. So what are the differences between these games? Let's talk about it. Good morning, how are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit, and today we're gonna to talk about the differences between 1-2 and 1-3. Now, here's the deal. Most rooms, like 99.99995% of them, will either spread 1-2 or 1-3. And the Cliff Notes answer of what is the difference between these stakes is essentially nothing. They're both going to be soft, they're both typically going to have pretty bad rake structure, and they're both going to be full of a higher density of newer to poker players. So if you're looking for the overall Cliff Notes answer, there it is. And if you like it, give this video a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. Now for a little bit of extra context, the rule of thumb typically in the poker ecosystem is that the lower you go in stakes, the higher density of weak or new players you're going to find in that game. And the higher in stakes you go, typically the lower density of new or bad players you're going to find in that game. Pretty simple. And this is typically because the people that are newer or less comfortable with poker typically want to risk the least amount of money and as such they just play the lowest game that is available and running. They don't really necessarily care what it is or any details about it such as rake, they really just want to play that game and risk the least amount of money possible. So if you actually had an online poker room that say totally got rid of all of their micro stakes games and they made 100 and now the lowest game in the room, I would actually suspect that room's 100 and L game would be pretty much the softest one on the entire internet. Now, I'm not saying the poker room should do that, but this is typically the way that I would expect things to pan out overall. So keeping all of that in mind, if a live room spreads either 1-2 or 1-3, I would expect both games to bring in a very similar player skill level and clientele, and you should expect these games to be quite similar overall. Now, of course, this isn't to say that you won't find a really tough 1-2 game somewhere and a really soft 5 10 games somewhere else, rather these are just simple rules that I consider. However, one thing that I have experienced is that 1-3 tends to play a little bit more shallow. Reason being is that people that also play 1-2 elsewhere get very comfortable buying in for $100 or rebuying in for $100 or $200 instead of a max buy of $300 or more. Reason is, is a lot of players that are newer are just not thinking about poker at a very high level, think about everything in terms of absolute dollars rather than raw big blinds, and as such they tend to buy in for dollar amounts they're comfortable with and used to, not necessarily thinking about max buys or buy-in structures or anything like that. So keep that in mind. Again, there's a lot of variability in terms of what rooms run these games and in which ways in terms of min buys and max buys and all that kind of stuff. So again, general rules of thumb, but overall that's something I've definitely noticed and experienced in 1-3 games. Now, I do want to take a quick moment and talk about rooms that do spread all three games. They spread 1-2 and 1-3 and 2-5. So let's just explain kind of the way to approach this in case you find yourself in this unique situation. So if a room runs all three, the first thing that I definitely want to pay attention to is what is the rake structure for all of those games? And also what is the min and max buy-in structures for those games as well, especially between 1-2 and 1-3. I've noticed that sometimes in this scenario they make the 1-2 game almost unplayable with really, really low min and max buy-ins. And if that's the case, that's obviously not so great, but pay attention because again, there's going to be variability, even though very few live rooms tend to spread all three games at the same time. So keeping the poker ecosystem model in mind that we were talking about earlier, 1-2 is the lowest game in this room and as such is typically going to be the softest and the most inviting to new poker players. So in this situation where you have a room that spreads all three games, what you typically find is that 1-3 plays kind of like a baby 2-5 game and 2-5 plays a little bit more like a baby 5-10 game. So there's this weird like cannibalization that happens. But again, the softest players typically tend to be at the 1-2 since the ones that are 1-2 players that want to play 2-5 and you know they're trying they will typically go play the intermediary level so they're going to play 1-3 meaning that 1-2 gets softer and softer which can be great and again there's not a lot of reason typically to play 1-3 in this game unless there's just a massive structure benefit either in rake or min max buys so if a room is spreading all three I typically suggest play 1-2 because it's going to be the softest game in the room overall again not table specific just overall or play 2-5 if that's the way you want to go. I typically don't suggest playing 1-3 in a room that spreads all three because really there's typically not a lot of benefit to doing so. Now another thing we have to talk about is that if a room spreads 1-2 or 1-3, there are no specific strategic differences
differences between those two games. It's just going to be poker. The strategy is going to be the exact same that applies to both. Things like effective stack sizes based upon the overall game structure, that's just poker strategy overall. That's not specific to 1-2 or specific to 1-3. Again, these tend to be the softer games in the room, and as such, the strategy is going to be very, very similar for both, keeping in mind things like structure, of course. And if you're interested in improving your overall strategy and thus making more money, whether you play 1-2, 1-3, or 2-5, I would highly suggest checking out Core from Red Chip Poker if you haven't already. Core is the most coherent poker course ever created with by far and away the most complete syllabus you're going to find, and it's available for just five bucks a week. Plus, there's a complete course dedicated to live cash games that is highly, highly valuable, and I definitely recommend every single live player sit down, study it at least once, and it's going to definitely pay off massively in the long run. So again, you can check all of that out at redshippoker.com slash core, redshippoker.com slash core, or link in the description box if you want to go that way. And that is going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully that helps, and if you have any comments, any questions, any thoughts on the differences between these games or any other games, please don't hesitate to let me know in the comments down below. And of course, if you like the video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated too. I look forward to seeing you guys back in another video shortly, and in the meantime, good luck out there, and happy grinding.